Hello, nerds. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Week in Nerddom Movies Edition for the week of May 21st, 2018. This week in movies, we have a Monster Hunter uh, announcement, a uh, Fear announcement. Yes, that old uh, game that eventually made its way to the Xbox, Fear, that's going to be up. Uh, Batman. Uh, Clue, Deadpool 2 that came out this weekend. We're going to talk about it and other stuff that's really awesome that's kind of related and an intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to... Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we get into the news, guys, we have to get into the sponsor. All of this week's episodes are going to be sponsored by Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy. That is the Patreon page where you can go support the channel. Uh, it's broken down. There's four different tiers. $1 tier, $2 tier, $5, and $10. And even just the $1 tier, which is just the early access to all the videos and the complete uh, instructions on the Renaissance Nerd videos, even just that tier, which... I feel like that's worth a buck a month, right? It, you, because that's full instructions for Renaissance Nerd. That's not just the ingredients list like you get on the free version of those videos. Uh, so check it out, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. Link is right here on the screen. And now let's jump into some news. First on our list, we got an announcement for a Monster Hunter movie. Mila Jovovich has signed on to star in the movie. Paul W.S. Anderson, her partner in crime on the uh, Resident Evil movies, is set to direct. And he said in a press release, and now this statement following, there's a good side to it and a bad side to it. The good side to it is that he's right in saying that there is the 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 the, the lack of a proper protagonist uh, in the game series lends itself well to turning it into a movie. Yes, absolutely. But then he also uh, blends that into a Resident Evil reference because he says, like we did on Resident Evil. Um, Resident Evil has a narrative. Resident Evil has a narrative that you guys screwed up horrendously. So... Eh... <sighs> Like that was that was their understanding of Resident Evil that there was no narrative for them to follow, so they could do whatever they wanted. It kind of like he says something about it. Um, they interjected their version of the story. Eh. But again, Monster Hunter kind of doesn't have a a, a very set narrative, so it, it potentially could lend itself better. It will be very interesting. Mila Jovovich, Monster Hunter. It will be very, very interesting. Next on the list, we're talking about Fear, F-E-A-R. That the, the game is getting turned into a movie. Um, Machinima Studios, so guys who know what they're doing with video game franchises, guys who did two seasons of an epic Mortal Kombat online series, uh, are they're teaming with monolith productions? I didn't look up other things monolith has done though It sounds familiar. So I know they've done something that I'm that we're the nerds are aware of they are getting the script There's another Mortal Kombat tie-in. They're getting the script written by Greg Russo the guy who is In charge who was in charge of writing the most recent version of the new Mortal Kombat reboot script so it's it, it stands to reason that this is has all of the right parts in place. Now let's see if they can execute in a, in an above mediocre fashion. Uh, Fear is such a a great part of my gaming history. Like I, I I have high expectations if they're going to turn this into a movie. So let's see what let's see what happens, man. I like. I, I don't know much until we get a little bit more on casting and, and maybe a script leak or something. 
that will give us a little bit more information. But we don't have any more information, so we're kicking on next. We're talking about Gambit one more time, but this time it's good. Uh, producer Simon Kinberg said in a press release that they are hoping to go into production or, and begin filming this summer, so really not too far off of their original filming date. Um, because, and this is totally conjecture, but apparently that meeting with Jordan Voigt, uh, what is it, Jordan Voigt Roberts went well? Uh, nothing is, has been said about how much of that original plot that they announced is going to be stuck to. Nothing is said, really, even if uh, Voigt Roberts is the guy that they went with. So we're definitely going to be keeping our ears open. Anytime we hear about it, we're going to talk about it because Gambit it could very well be a great movie. It might not be, but it could be. It could be. Next on the list, we're talking about Batman and Ben Affleck. The internet is going crazy over the fact that now Ben Affleck is saying he wants to remain wearing the cape and cowl until the unforeseen future. He wants to stay as Batman. And who knows why? What happened? Where did this come from? This was this is one I'm kicking off to you guys. Why did he do this? Is it because he got such a negative backlash from all the fans saying, you're a great Bruce Wayne, stick, stay around, we want you here? I uh, who knows. But it seems that because he's Ben Affleck, because he has one of the biggest names in Hollywood right now, if he wants to stay, my money says he's gonna stay. But that's all we have there. Next up, we're talking about the Clue reboot. Yeah, they're rebooting Clue. Uh, it's a different interpretation, not necessarily a reboot, because reboot would imply that it was a series, when really it was an adaptation of a board game, so, eh, yeah. They're doing a remake, there you go, of Clue. Um, screenwriter Paul Wernick said uh, in public somehow, a uh, press release or something in an interview, I, I didn't quite catch that. But he said that we shouldn't be surprised if his version of Clue, if it, if it sticks to his script, that we get a rated R version of Clue. Um, I, that doesn't compute. <laughs> Clue is a family game. The movie from the 80s, right? It was like 82, I believe. Uh, the movie from the 80s is by and large, something that you can show your entire family. Uh, by today's standards, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but not much. So how does either of those, how do either of those two things become something that gets an R rating? Like, sure, I can see if you show some of the deaths or you show some of the things that happen, even in the original movie, if they were going off of that original script somehow, uh, if you were to take some of those things a little bit further or take them a little bit more seriously, I can see that getting a PG-13 rating, but an R rating? I It just does not compute. So with that information, I honestly, if it's that bad, if it's, if it's so bad that it would potentially get an R rating, I doubt it gets made. But only time's gonna tell us that one too. Next is Deadpool 2. Yes, it is already out, so why are we talking about it? This is not the review. The review will come after I've seen it another time, but you can expect a review, I promise. I know I didn't review Infinity War. Uh, it's I've had a lot of editing to do, so something had to go, and that was the thing. But there is a couple of things of note. If you have not seen the movie, I will not be spoiling really much of anything for you. Uh, it seems, if you're, if, again, if you have yet to see the movie, go in not expecting exactly what you were sold in the trailers, because some of the footage in the trailers is there specifically to mislead you. There, there is a rather big plot point, from what I understand, that is uh, a secret because of the misinformation in the trailers. So there's that. And a uh, major, well, a big character in the comic books that we talked about potentially being in the movie is actually in the movie. And I'm pretty stoked about it. So, go see the movie. 
Come back for the review and we can talk about it together there or here, whichever. Our last bit of news is related to Deadpool and it's Zombieland 2. It's happening. I bring, I say it like that because the writers, the, the writing team that did Deadpool 2 also wrote the original Zombieland script and they were doing their press junket and they were talking about future movies and Zombieland 2 came up and they said, oh, it's happening. The entire original cast has signed on to do it and it's probably going to have to do a bit of a jump in time because it's been nine years at this point. They're shooting for release date of the 10 year anniversary. So October of 2019 will be the 10 year anniversary. Um, they're, they're trying, they're, they're hopefully going into production very, very early in 2019. Uh, it has yet to be officially announced, but because of the success of Deadpool 2, we're, they're very likely gonna be able to do whatever they want, and they want to do Zombieland, and the entire cast, minus of course Bill Murray, spoiler alert, <laughs> uh, has signed on to come back. So, uh, the, the reason for the time jump is because Abigail Breslin was pretty young when they did that movie, and now here we are, going to be 10 years later, she's grown up <laughs> so it makes sense that they kind of have to do a bit of a time jump but that's all the writers are telling us about it they have an idea of where it's going they have yet to finish the script but i would imagine it's going to be a very quick process and that is the end of your movies video this week guys thank you very much for watching all the way to the end what did I forget though? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If though you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website generallynerdy.net. That is the place where you can get all of the freebies, all of the blog entries, all of the writing and the social media links, and the links to the stores so you can get your nerdy swag. If you would rather uh, support the channel a little more directly, just like we talked about at the beginning of the, ep of the episode, there is a Patreon page, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. That is where you can go sign on for just a dollar a month and you get everything early. And you also get the entire Renaissance Nerd descriptions for the cooking videos. So th there are higher tiers and you get more stuff if you want to uh, pay a little bit more money. But again, just a dollar a month goes a long way on this side of things. So check it out, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you are new to the channel though, guys, click that subscribe button. If you like the episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go clicking boxes and visiting websites and paying things and doing the stuff, guys, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.